Advisory Board of Meeting, can you please start with the roll call? Yes. Aaron Angel? No. Scott Conrad? Present. Thomas Davis? Yeah. Paige Lewis? Is not here. Sam Libby? Here. Nicholas Lavello? Here. And Council Liaison, Sean McCoy? Present. Okay, moving on. Let's go on to the approval of the agenda for this month's meeting. Um, any comments or if, if not, is there a motion to approve the agenda? Do you want to move to approve the agenda? I'll right. second it. Second. All in favor? Aye. All righty. Okay, no, no opposed. We can keep on trucking then. Approval of previous month's minutes. Are there any comments on the previous month's minutes? If not, then is there a motion to approve previous month's minutes? I move to approve previous month's minutes. I'll we'll second. Yes. All those in favor? Aye. All right. That's all four of us. Okay, great. Um, moving, moving right along then. Uh, next up is public invited to be heard. Do we have public invited to be heard? We do. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, then, we're moving real fast here, we're going to move on to old business, which is the discussing the board retreat. Uh, and so I just wanted to thank everyone who submitted the surveys, appreciate that. I actually do not have the results of the surveys yet, but I think Jeff is going to help me pull them up. Yeah. Thank you. It, it appears that June 8th had the most people being able to attend. I think Sam, you were not available, sure. and uh, David's not available. Okay. Okay. That, and, and we, I don't think we've heard from Paige. We have not heard from Paige yet. No. So, yeah, I, yeah. We, we've got a lot of things up, up in the air, so I don't know if yes. you want to wait a month on this. And maybe everybody will be here next month. Well, we know it's not going to be the May date. Correct. So, yeah. that means that we will be meeting again. Yeah. And then we can, okay. And while there's three of us, other things that we're not able to join, of course. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Um, okay, then then let's, if, we, if that's the case, then I think we're okay with punting to next month. To table it? Tabling it for now. Do you want to have staff proceed with reserving a spot, like a space for the meeting? Well, we don't, we don't know the date. We don't know the date. We really do that. Yeah. You said we have her from page or no? We have her. Oh, you have not. Okay, sorry. No. Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, not ideal, but I think it's it's okay. Uh, what about um, results for the topics? Did you get results for well, not from page, but we do you have that? Now there there's an update. Right? We don't have to we don't have to make a decision on this, but I'm just curious what that. I, I think on the questions, I think everybody had responded, but maybe Thomas, did you? Did you respond to the which of the topics? Uh, I believe I did. I, th I thought I had, but I can no. I guess I had. Yeah, because I yeah. You had responded to the, the date, but yep. not not that. So okay. we need uh, Paige and uh, no, not Paige, just Thomas to right. to respond to that. Yep. Okay. So I'll have for next next meeting. Yep. Okay. So. Well, well then, uh, we'll table that for next meeting then. Okay. Cool. And then there's just that one open question, and then we'll we'll send Paige yeah. a follow up. Yep. You know. Cool. Okay. Uh, cool. Let's keep moving on then. That's we flew by ten minutes. We might have make this basketball game after all. <laughs> uh, great. Moving on to new business. So we're going to start off with the uh, discuss partnering with Boulder Valley and Longmont Conservation Districts. That's Daniel. Yeah. Sarah and I are here Sarah to and discuss items A and B. They're kind of, <coughs> kind of the same thing. Yeah. I mean, item A is part of item B. I, mean, I see. Because we we just wanted we came here to talk to you about open spaces acquisitions priorities for 2024, and Olander CE is one of them. Great start to the year. Yeah. Yes. So, well, we started the year by purchasing the Olander farm. That's a good, good step for the CEO. Wow. Yes. Are, they gonna, are we still going to have that the, the little stuff down below? Is it like we have a little seating area? 
Oh, they have like a little awning sort of. If it's part of the house lot, it's not part of our ownership. I mean, over there on the. You know what? Okay. You no. We have no. the oil and gas in the corner, but then we've got the two kind of house areas cut out of our ownership. This is the farm that we bought, that we closed on in January. So this is the. This but, is the old land farm. Yeah. Yeah, we had the Sister City um, uh, was at uh, dinner there, and it looks like it's that road. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, this is this is over. Mm -hmm. I mean, no. No. no, no, we're we're northwest, northeast of Union here. Oh, or, oh, okay. You've got to be mixing up with I, uh, another property. Which, which one are you thinking of? I was thinking the one, I was, never mind. I thought it was oh. the Overland or, oh, I thought it was, uh, maybe I missed remember in the name. Hobart out here past, uh, uh, Olin Farm. Olin. Oh, Olin. I yes. was thinking, yes. Olin. I'm thinking, where is that? Yes, a con <laughs> that's, a, that's a private piece with a county, county piece next to it. So. Oh, okay, that's right. Yeah, and they have the farm stand. Yeah, the farm stand. Yeah, I'll stop interjecting here. Yeah. I just <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just to give you a step back. Yeah. yeah. Close. So starting off with the uh, with this topic, helping us like contextualize it all. That's right. I may. So now you know where the Olander farm is that we bought earlier this year. Mm -hmm. So this was um, a, a big chunk. This was um, a big chunk of our open space um, acquisition fund for the year. So this was a big, important acquisition that we accomplished. And, you know, um, back in 2016, uh, council gave, city council gave um, staff directive that it's, we would like to see you putting conservation easements on open space that is acquired to give it extra protection. <coughs> so the Olander farm, now that we purchased it, it is a goal to get a conservation easement on it this year. And then we have. And Danielle, I'm happy to just interrupt yeah, this go ahead. again. Interrupt. With this, this acquisition, it really is an important piece because um, prior to this, all those properties, if you just scroll a little bit from um, 66 all the way down now, those are all city open space for water properties. So that whole eastern side of. Yeah, this yeah. was a puzzle piece that was missing, the chunk in the corner. So, so all those properties now are continuous. That's right. right. Nice yeah, it, it, it does give us a nice kind of buffer between us and our neighboring communities of, of open space. And so we have a local family already out there farming, um, and they've been out there for a month already. Um, so we we would like to put a conservation easement over Olander this year, and we're looking to partner with Boulder Valley and Longmont Conservation Districts to do that. So Sarah approached them, and they were... Uh, interested and they have their board meeting tomorrow morning so I'm, I'm going to attend their board meeting and answer any questions that their board might have um, so we so we can go through all of the acquisitions that we have on our list and then we can circle back with questions or you can just yeah we can I just talk about this one. each one in. Um, is it uh, is there a history of the city owned properties having easements owned by that those districts yes okay. um, a couple of our um, other open space properties here east of Union are, are conservation easements with Boulder Valley and Longmont Conservation Districts. We have our Herner, Hartman, and French properties. They're the CE holder on those. Um, so yes, and so um, in terms of what, what this might look like uh, with us being the fee simple landowner and them being the conservation easement holder, you know, typically when you do this kind of thing, there's usually a baseline <coughs> property report done. And so they've, you know, that was one of their questions. Do you want to do that? And yes, we do. It's good due diligence. And we looked back at what that would have cost in the past when we did previous partnerships with them. And so we're thinking somewhere between five and $10,000 to, to do the baseline. Um, what else? Are there any other... That we to say about that. Is there a standard easement language the city proposes in those cases, or is it their easement language? No, it's ours. It's yours. It would well, actually, I don't actually know if they have a template that they would want us to use. Um, 
we have a template that we usually use. I mean, we, we partner with Boulder County as well. They have their own template. So I think it's just the attorneys agreeing on, and, and, and our attorney looking it over and making sure that all the tenants of what we expect in the CE are covered. Yeah, this should be fairly negotiated. I mean, both both parties typically have a form, and we we work together long enough that I think we're pretty close on the first draft. But there's usually something we can work out. What are the risks with this sort of thing? I mean, keep in mind. Are there anything that we? I mean, what are the risks with entering into a conservation easement or present protecting the conservation values of an open space? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a, it's a open-ended question yeah I mean things that come to mind are um, you know they they would then come and monitor the property every year or the properties that they hold CEs on so I, I don't know I can't what do you think do you think I mean I think there's just yeah a little more there's a more eyes on what we're doing out there you know they're making sure we're gonna comply with the terms of the easement but that's something the city would like to do anyway, anyway. so <laughs> I think it also, in a way, maybe helps too. There's, you know, there's somebody out there once a year who can report back. Yeah, if like there are any violations. For, for or example, something, some trespass on this property. There is like it's a historic farm, so a family owned it, you know, for for many decades, and they had like a place where they just put everything that they discarded from the farm in in one area. So the, the tenant farmer that out, is out there now has asked us for a dumpster because he wants to start cleaning that up. And if we put a CE over it, we're going to say, that needs to be cleaned up, that needs to be handled, we're going to look at that every year. Okay. And, and, and they're going to monitor it and say, hey, it's not cleaned up where it is. So those type of things will happen. Got it. I think one of the things that, again, that one of the reasons that former proud boards and council on this is it makes it more difficult for one body just to overturn something. So um, again, what the risks are, it's probably more of a risk for future council. They said all of a sudden that we'd like to build a hotel up here, we should just dispose of it. They, or do fireworks, that's where yeah, things are. That's what I've been thinking the whole time. I was going to say that too, but I was too sensitive right now. But again, <laughs> you look at something like the Lincoln's <laughs> Park, it has a conservation easement on it. Nature not, area. Not only do we dig a farm, Nature area it has a conservation easement on it. Um, if council would like to do something, we still have to remember we have a conservation easement. We have to make sure that that other party is aware of that and is meeting the terms of that conservation easement. So it does make it um, more challenging to you know do something different than we, we purchased the property for. So again, I think that where some of the, the risks. Like I say it's really more down the road. If someone else would like to try to undo this, it makes it more challenging. And, and conservation easements uh, are different. Like, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here, we're sitting here as the open space team telling you that previous crabs and city council have directed to put conservation easements over open spaces whenever we can. Um, but there are, some, there are some properties that the city had water department purchased around um, the reservoir for expansion. And those properties have conservation easements over them with very different language that says, when we're ready to expand the reservoir, the farming operation will, you know, shrink over to this side of the property so that the reservoir can expand. So that that'll look very different than the conservation easement that language that we would want to put for Ola and Earth. Okay. Thank you. Um. Right. So we'll we'll update you on how it goes with. Um, Boulder Valley Conservation District Board. Um, also, we came to you last year, and some of you were here and some of you weren't, um, talking about our acquisition priorities, and, and some of our acquisition priorities are our partnership, a partnership that we want to enter into with Boulder County. Did you want an, a motion from the board for, as you take this forward, that you can let them know that Pratt either supports this or not? Well, I was getting there. Okay. Um, and I was thinking that maybe we get through all of them first, okay. and then I talk, and then a subset of them are the partnership with Boulder County. And that works. Just, yeah. Is that all right? Yep. Yeah. So we're, we're going to go through just five. Five, uh, five on top of Olander, including Olander, including Olander. Five, five, four together. Okay. Five, five including Olander. Um. And some of them are going to be, so 
what I was trying to say is that we came here last year to say these are our acquisition priorities and these are the ones that we're taking to Boulder County that we want to partner on. And last year we didn't have anything because we had just partnered with them on Adam Farm. Right. And so we we just went to them and said, you know, we value your partnership and we're here to like be a supporting partner for you if you need a letter on a grant or anything like that. That's what we did last year. We were making it a planning year. Um, so, so we're doing that again. We're, we're, we submit this every year to Boulder County. They ask all the municipalities for, you know, we, we have funding available every year. What, what are you asking to partner on? So um, Olander, we're not asking them because that we're, we want to partner with Boulder Valley and Longmont Conservation Districts. The next one, though, um, is the um, Milton CE in the Button Rock Preserve area. Um, so this is a private property. Um, it's those two parcels right there. So the green is the outline of our Button Rock Preserve that the city owns. And then those two parcels are private. And a lot of it around to the north is Forest Service property. So um, this landowner actually approached Longmont and said, I'm interested in distinguishing development rights. Um, he mentioned the northern parcel, but he's got two 35s there. And he he's interested potentially in distinguishing development rights on both. And so we went and we looked at the property to see if that would potentially meet what we would consider important conservation values for a CE. And um, the the thing with this is, if he were to, to donate these um, CEs, Longmont is not a state certified agency, so we would um, we would ask Boulder County to hold the conservation easement um, on these because they are a state certified agency. You have to be certified to accept donations by DORA, and they are. Um, so this is one that we would want to put in our requests to Boulder County this year. So Sarah's had some conversation with them about it, and they're. Um, yeah, they're, they're amenable to it, they're looking into it, and um, the reason that this would be beneficial to Longmont, even though we wouldn't be the CE holder, is that um, it's right next to Button Rock Preserve, and it would have value in terms of, it, he's interested in doing wildfire mitigation, so it would, it would be adjacent to us, so any work in that arena would really help us out, and it would just be more conserved acres near our property. And if there's anything you want to add to that? No. Yeah, we, well, we did talk about if there is a, if Boulder County holds the easement, maybe having like a right, reserve a right to purchase. We do have a question out to Boulder County. Um, if, sometimes in these kind of deals, if, if there's a CE holder, um, you know, since the landowner approached us and we're bringing this to Boulder County, we're asking Boulder County if in the CE language we could write in the right of first refusal. So if Mr. Milton ever went to sell, Longwood would have the right of first refusal to purchase these parcels. So we're looking into if that's a possibility in this deal. Good, yeah. Is that little green spot up above uh, an island of Button Rock that would now be contiguous for conservation? That is an there? island of Button Rock that would be contiguous per a CE. Yeah. These would still be privately owned, yeah. but yeah. <clears throat> so would there be something weird between like Going from city to county property, like, would there be any weirdnesses with that? Like, over here, we have county property right there, so you can have goats. Like, where, are there, like, weirdnesses with, like, emergency response or anything like that in that area that would be problematic? Well, there, so those wouldn't be open to the public. Okay. And that, that area that is not contiguous is not open to the public. Okay. So, in this instance, no. There wouldn't be any sort of problem with that. In this area, is all unincorporated Boulder County. So, fire services and stuff is mostly Longmont. And that, I mean, sorry, um, Lions is the first responder up there. So, we have good mutual aid agreements with Boulder County Sheriff's Office and um, the fire up there as well. Okay, so we've gone through two. Can I ask you? Yeah, yeah, yep. Are there any structures on either of those properties at this point? There are. Yeah. He's got his he's got his second home on that lower cell parcel. 
And you extinguish. He right wants to extinguish one. every. Uh, he definitely wants to uh, extinguish. Hold on, the northern one. He wants to distinguish, extinguish all the development rights on the southern one. There's nothing, no structures whatsoever on it. And he is also interested. When I spoke with him last fall, in maybe putting a house lot, having his house lot carved out at the first one, and having CE for the rest of it. Great. Have you discussed um, evaluation of the CE with him yet, and a price for that? That that that'll be up to Boulder County. Okay. So we're going to go through this. You're process. asking them to fund it and negotiate with them. It, yes. Okay. Yeah. I mean, there'll be a per acre price, fair market value kind of. That there'll, there'll be something to look at for that. But yes. Um, the, reason, the reason I ask is if I think you're asking for our input on priorities, knowing what this would cost in very different areas in the fourth part of that. This is a, you know, not only accessible and not, you know, close to Longmont property. So if, and if you're asking to compare the prices, we'll do it. Yeah, actually, that's a, that's a good point. Um, there's not a whole lot of um, money involved in a lot of these things that I'm talking with you yeah. about today like this like this wouldn't this wouldn't we weren't wouldn't really even be in this deal necessarily this would be a ce between boulder county and the private landowner we're hoping to write in the language of first refusal but it's a benefit to us with this with this land being next to button rock in terms of um, wildfire safety and things like that to, mm -hmm. to so that yeah yeah i'm just saying if we're, if we're saying we're asking you guys to do this these are our asks there's value to that. We could have two other big asks, and we don't have money for that because we're doing this from as an ask. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We don't have we don't have like two million dollars, but six million dollars of things to buy right now. Okay. <laughs> but there could be a year when we come and say that we do, and then we we'll need your help deciding what to do. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. So the third one is in Button Rock as well. Um, there is a state, uh, the, uh, the parcel is owned by the state land board and um, Button Rock, I mean, and City of Longmont leases it out. We have a, a lease over the property. Um, do you know the details, any details about the lease and why, what, what the lease, I mean, it's called a recreational lease, but I think it's just. It's so, I don't know if it, I should have brought something up, but on these, you know, this is the ones that were set aside for, I think it was a school board piece that were always intended to raise money for the school districts, um, be it timber or lumber, and they really wanted to dispose of those. Boulder County has gone through some of these as well, and they keep raising the rent on these. That's one piece of it that makes it challenging for us. We were paying a pretty significant amount of rent on this, and it's a recreational lease, and they said we can't recreate on it. It's, not, it's, it's really called heavy. recreational lease, but yeah. yeah that's so I think if we, if we had this property in our fee ownership, it gives us the ability to manage it the way we want to, not have to worry about ever increasing um, rent rates. And again, there's actually some opportunities for some trails and stuff in that area that I, I think that we could look at as well to make it accessible to our community as well. So Yes, so unlike the two CEs we've just gone through, this one, we, are, we would be interested in purchasing in fee and being the owner of, and so, in 2020 or something, State Land Board, according to Price, the ranger up there, was trying to sell this. And um, I don't know what happened to that deal. I, I wasn't sitting in this position, so I, I didn't. I wasn't even aware of it. Um, but he let us know that in the past they've been interested in selling. So I approached them this year and said, are you interested in selling? And the person I spoke to said, oh, I don't think so. I don't think we ever want to sell our properties. But let me talk to the guy who really knows. And as of this morning, I haven't heard back. But um, this is one that we would be wanting to uh, partner with Boulder County on because we wouldn't. I, I'm assuming. I'm assuming with um, the fact it's almost 90 acres, it'd be, you know, we're, we're talking on the order of a million dollars, maybe more. Um, we'd want to potentially partner with them and or. You know, come working up a deal with them for this. Um, so, kind of more to come on that. I want to include this one on the list if we hear back from the state land board and they say, actually, yes, it is for sale and here's the price. Mm -hmm. um, but we don't have that piece yet. So, 
Um, we can circle back to that in a minute. Let me just get through the last two pieces. Um, the, the trail priority that we have on our list that we were going to put on our Boulder County Partnership um, ask is just the regional trail planning in the area that was, we brought this last year. And the regional trail planning in the area, so Longmont to Lyons, Erie to Longmont, the, the uh, Rocky Mountain Greenway master planning effort was set aside when the flood happened and it hasn't been picked up since. But Sarah and I were just there in January and their trail planners were talking about potentially picking that effort up again. So we want to say we're here to partner with you, whether it be, you know, be on your technical advisory committee, be on, um, it, you know, help, help with grant support, things like that. So we just want to add that to the list um, as, as a partner with them as the lead. And that's, that's exactly what we did last year. But this is the first year since then we've heard them say, like, oh, no, we are, we are interested in starting. So more to come on that. Um, and then something new that we're putting on, on our list, but it's not a partnership with Boulder County, it's just Longmont's acquisition priorities, is, is water for open space. We just bought the Olander farm, but it had no water to buy with it. So we've got a farmer on there, and we're working with our water resources department to essentially rent water, move water, move city water around so that that farmer can have a viable farm. So we're only in a one-year lease because we only have a one-year solution to that problem right now. So um, we would like to prioritize possibly using some of our acquisition funds, if we can, to buy Highland ditch water and CBT water. Okay, so that's that's all the priorities. And then, so there were five things, the Olander CE, the Button Rock Area Milton CE, which was the private landowner, the Button Rock State Land Board parcel, which we would want to buy and see, concentrating on buying water, and the regional trail planning effort. So that's five things, and then the ones that we would want to put on the Boulder County application are the Milton CE of Button Rock with the two parcels, the State Land Board parcel there, and just, just you know, reiterating to them that we, we do want to be part of the trail planning Rocky Mountain Greenway planning process. That was a lot. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, but you did a good job. You made it clear. Thank you. And what you said earlier, I think, is that there's not like there's other properties out there that you didn't include. This is kind of the best list we have. This right? is the best list yeah. we have. I mean, uh, sometimes there are things that come up during the year. Like, there's always, there's, we don't know. Like, tomorrow there could be an opportunity that I then didn't talk to you about tonight. Um, those sorts of things, or things that aren't ready to be shared publicly. Um, but yeah, this is our list. This is our current list for 2024, knowing that we made a, a big, big acquisition just in February. Mm -hmm. And so you're looking for the board to either support or nitpicking of this, or you just, yeah. Yes. <laughs> right. are, you, are you looking for me to say, I move that we accept what you just said, and <laughs> because it's way too long. There. Um, that, I mean, I do move that. I mean, I think that all sounded good and logical to me, like good acquisitions um, to go to Boulder County, and I also, yeah, like the con conservation easement as well, I, I move that we do that. So I don't, none of that's official has really spoken in. And I should be clear, the motion would, it's not the recommendation to city council, it's to staff, right? It's it's so that staff can include it. It's so that we know that you do or don't like our whole list mm -hmm. of acquisition priorities for 2024. And then separately, I want to be able to say on our application to Boulder County, we took this to PRAP. Here are their thoughts. Mm -hmm. They like it all. They don't like it all. They like this and not that. So it's kind of two two things. Got it. I like what you said. Thanks, Boulder County. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I think what you said was all good. I mean, there's some I'm like more excited about than others, and 
but it's, it's okay. That all sounds good to me. So that's what I say. Anybody else want to say? The only question I had was the this school board special non recreational recreational lease thing. Mm -hmm. If we buy it, do any of those funds then switch back to the school board like it was intended for? Um, if or we, that was just a timber pricing thing. That's that. So we basically lease it now and oh. we pay a lease rate, so that would go away. Yeah. We would own it. Yep. So. And okay. Yeah. And Does then. Answer yeah. that. No, I, I, I was just, we were just briefly talking about maybe the school collects some sort of return on it, but. They lease it out to yeah. us because they're trying to yeah. earn money. Right. Okay. Yeah. No worries. And I think they're all across the state trying to rather get yeah. a lump sum of cash and invest that and get yeah. better. That's probably paying out more than a timber rate. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's what I, yeah, I, was, I was just wondering if there was a valuation. Any other concerns you want to raise before we move into a, a motion? Do you want to try again? <laughs> it's such a long It's a tough one, it yeah. Works plenty to of. the last two weekends. Um, I move that we go to Boulder County with the proposal that the acquisition the acquisition proposal that Dana <laughs> said. <laughs> Woo! Okay. <laughs> All right, motion on the floor then. Do we have a second? Uh, a second. All right, all in favor? Okay. I, I wish it was a better, well, it's great, it's great. It's awesome. Uh, okay. Yeah, like they don't care. They just want to know, did they like it or did they not? Like, okay. and we like yeah, it, we think it's good, right? Like, That's great, thank you. We don't need yeah. great wording. <laughs> yeah, we'll work with it another time. Cool. Okay, now does that mean that we're done with both A and B then? Do you want to say anything about the full list, or just that was the Boulder County list? Oh, there's more. That. Yeah, there is. This is the whole. There's five things. Three things are going on the list to Boulder County. Right. I think we're spreading all of them. I'm confused. Yeah. And I would. I understand that. And I move that we partner with Boulder Valley and Longmont Conservation Districts on the parcel above Union Reservoir. That's all under Olander. Olander 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 parcel. Sorry, I didn't want to say all on farms because then they'd be. Trust me, you don't. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> I'll second that. Sorry. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Okay, well, we're, we're unanimous in that as well. Great. Now we are Better? Now we're good? Yes. Okay. Yes. Sorry for the check, mishap there. Check, I got confused. Good. Uh, thank you, Aaron, for, for, for that. Okay. Uh, so that would mean that we're covered on both A and B, right? Right. Awesome. Okay. So then let's keep moving on to the next item, which is discussing 2024 capital improvement projects and 2025 proposed projects. This is a meaty, meaty topic. I think, uh, David or, or Jeff? I'm, I'm going to start. I'm going to start. Yeah. Just like I'm going to start so I can leave. <laughs> He's like, I know what he was going to say. Yeah, I, I've heard his. So one of the things we wanted to do is just do a kind of a overview of the CIP process. Uh, we are, we as staff are in the midst of that right now, uh, and that process will end on May 6th. Each division and department in the city has about 30 days to uh, develop or update their projects in the, the system. And, you know, parks must have 100 yeah. projects on its own. I think recreation has about 10 of them. Uh, and, and so during that process, we update the, the CIPs. And the CIPs are, are unique in that it's a five-year plan Council will only review and approve the 2025, but it gives them kind of a, a guideline of what's going to happen the, the four years after that. Uh, but again, they only will approve the 2025 uh, dollar amount. Uh, any questions on process? That's kind of quick uh, because we do have a, a lot of projects we want to go through. Any questions? That one's great, thank you. Okay. Amy? 
So uh, also, I want to know Stephanie. You know, really is usually here to talk about her projects, and that's the majority of our CIP projects. With that big piece that was set aside by council and leadership with Harold, um, was the eight and five projects. Um, Danielle has a couple of those as well. We talked about those. Stephanie's husband was in a pretty significant car accident, so she okay. is at home with him right now. It's been a, a week at the hospital, and it's going to be a while before she can probably be back in the office. So um, I'm happy to cover for her tonight. We actually just did this with Harold, though. So I think as Jeff talked about, one of the, the challenging things with this group, and Jeff and I talk about this a lot, too, is how we help you be more involved in this process when it really is a a list of projects that aren't always even completed when we started it. We've already laid it out for the next five years, um, and we go through those and they all get done so they get carried forward. So for us right now, probably the biggest things that we can look at are those eight and five projects, and that's where Stephanie's team, Daniel's team, are, are working on those. And of those eight, um, Clover Meadow is in the process of going right now, and that should be completed um, by fall of, of this year. Um, Dry Creek, the synthetic, synthetic fields, um, should be ready for play next year, it sounds like, 2025. And then Fox Meadows is looking like January 25. So we got three of those that are looking that they have a completion date. Um, and then Danielle has Right now, which you have the union. Sarah, Sarah I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me roll it down. Yeah, mm -hmm. the union loop trail, mm -hmm. um, which is part of the bigger master plan. Um, and that would start, we would start design this year and go into construction in 2025, phasing construction. Um, and then we have a St. Brain Greenway phase 12, is another 85. And that's actually. Um, the western extension of St. Brain Greenway to Airport Road that should it'll eventually connect. So it'll be currently designed as along the north side and it would connect to future Polar County extension of St. Brain Greenway. So we have that plan for design in the probably the second half of 2025 and then construction in 2026. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I said for you, yeah. Jeff. Go ahead. Thanks, David. So we're have a trail that goes to Airport Road. Why sorry. why do we need another one on the north side? Okay, so this is a project uh, part of the Greenway Trail where we've done eleven phases of the trail in the city. They're complete. We're doing uh, the twelfth phase called Phase Thirteen is connecting Sandstone Ranch to St. Drain State Park, and then the last piece of it is this phase 12 that would connect us into Boulder County system. So it's it's a project that's been on our books since the 90s. Yeah. Um, the 90s? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's <clears throat> a project that our team is going to be working on, which we have not started on. So we, we also, our team also inherited St. Grain 13, which we're starting construction on. And we, were, we inherited the project, we inherited an idea about where the trail should go, and we did not end up close to that. Because we did our very initial analysis of the trail, and it didn't make sense to us after, you know, two decades had passed, it didn't jive anymore. So we came up with a new plan that made sense for today. So the same process is going to occur on 12. We're going to do a very initial alignment analysis and ask questions just like that. What are we doing here? Does this make sense? Where does it make sense? So none of that has even started. There's big heron nests there at that. The heron rookery at Golden yeah. Ponds? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So for the record, Golden Ponds is one of my favorite areas. <laughs> <laughs> and my what I talked with David about is that we already have the connection to airport. Wouldn't we be money ahead to be able to get all the way to Pella Crossing by not having to do that another trail all over. Doesn't sound like a bad idea. Let's. I, I mean, it's, so we start by putting all the ideas on the table. With right. with thirteen, I could bring up an image and show you about ten different trail ideas that we had. I'll just I'll just say like I, I ride that Lakeland's Gulch a lot that area, and I'll start at Port Road. Right now, there is sidewalk on Airport Road that is protected, nice bike path all the way to St. Brain Road, but not all the way past 
the farm and all the way up to Ninth Avenue. So yeah, that's the, that's my point is that you could use that money to do that work rather than paying for another trail on the north side all the way to airport. From. Yeah, definitely would be fun. It's worth an option. I mean, Lycan's Gulch kind of dead ends in the industrial area right now, so having more connectivity would be nice. But um, it'd also be much, the Greenway's like a nice direct path, a lot of it. That would be a big deviation. It's worth looking at it, I think, for sure. I'm just saying, stop. And just so this group knows, I've been working um, with Stephanie because the land along St. Brain Phase 12 was supposed to be dedicated within like 90 days after um, it was annexed. That was seven years ago now, and it still hasn't been um, dedicated. So we're working that, and the landowners are pushing back and saying, why are you putting the trail here and make more sense here? So one of the things we did is really commit to saying, is that what Danielle just said? Um, we have a, we've inherited an old plan. We're gonna look at it, we're gonna see what circumstances have changed, what makes sense, and I'll tell you from the natural resource side and try to protect corridors, that's an important piece for, for us. Um, user experience is important. And when you hear about our budget for upcoming projects, budget's a big piece too. So if we can save a dollar to make connections and make things happen that give a good user experience and connect you know, an area without having to impact habitat, we're going to get all into consideration. One thing I would add is that uh, one of the properties right near there is Sky Pilot Farm that the county just purchased. Mm -hmm. So that'd be other options also for alignment that they're interested in. Like they bought it as an ag property, but it's no longer private, which could. Yep, and so we didn't include this one in our 2024 acquisition priorities, but in terms of partnership with Boulder County, we are trying to connect into their system with this last leg of the St. Green Greenway through, through the city. So. We'll probably be talking about it to you this time next year uh, in that capacity as well. And again, this Daniel's project, again, it's just so super serious project. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, all these extra people now, so it's great having people work on something yeah. stuff done. But when we get these done, I mean, you're, you really are talking now from I 25 helipods. Um, it's pretty impressive. Um, which then that that so let me go back then. So that is now the Union Trail, Phase Twelve, which is at eight and five. The Clover Meadows, Dry Creek, and Fox Meadows. So that's five and eight. I think Union's a right? That's what yeah. yeah that's, that's what it said. Yeah, so okay. you get five of them there. Um, when this really kicked off, one of the driving forces was. Um, you all, a lot of you remember, it's just like Steve sitting here for a while after Kathy left. We had one person trying to do this project. So we had a pile of money and we couldn't get things moving um, because all this work was getting held up at the ERC project, and other stuff that we're responsible for, and other CIP, C, CIP work in the city. Um, now this work is getting done, but we have burned through that. It was a pile of money known to do it. Now we have people to do it, and we don't have a pile of money. So we're really happy to start you know, looking at what kind of Permits coming in to refurbish funds within these different um, fund categories, how conservation trust is lining up, how open space can be used along some of the Greenway projects. So it's going to be really start getting creative on those, those next group. We also talked about in this piece, even at the projects we're doing, because we wanted to do so much at once, um, Steph and I kind of joke saying we're getting five really good parks done. There's nothing spectacular because we had to kind of cut things a little bit more bare bones to make sure we could try to use these funds, try to get parts in areas. We've been waiting for a long, long time. We need to talk about you know Gallo that's in this process too. That um, we made some commitments about moving from two pickleball courts to four pickleball courts and trying to make sure that we um, give a good experience over there. We don't want to cut anything in that area. So we really are going to be getting a lot of work done, but it is not super. Creative. So we've talked about, do we do the next three, or do we do maybe one really well, or do we do two really well? Or we look at recreation and say, what really is your biggest priority, and do we slow it down a little bit to try to make sure that we're <clears throat> able to, to do these parks in a way that meets kind of long lots standards and quality. And again, my takeaway is there would be quality parks that would be great, but I think everyone in this field, bless you, bless you. in this room, Especially the side table, they want to see really cool stuff. Really cool stuff costs a lot of money, yeah. and um, it's amazing how much it costs anymore. And that's one of the things that um, 
One of Stephanie's staff members, Tatiana, really Joy, working at that we were working with Denver a bit on, and it was called Place Ride Easy, where people are going. And what they found out is that when you build a really cool park, because we had this idea of wanting to have parks within walking distance of 10 minutes, but the minute you build something really cool, people stop going to that really close piece because everyone wants the really cool one. So do we not have 50 parks, but scale that back, and that's what Denver's finding out, and really build something the community wants. And again, I think with our trail system, you can get about anywhere in our park system. It's really easy to get to that one poster. That one poster actually gets you on a greenway that can get you to someplace else too. So I think we have to have some conversations about how we go from this group of CIP projects into what's next. It's going to be a conversation we have with this group, but we're going to probably start internally seeing what is, what is recreation, what do our project managers see as the, the gaps in our community, and again, this place where I we're really seeing where we are having gaps, especially in uh, neighborhoods that are underserved. You know. Our, do we have the ability for them to have that park in their backyard where they don't have to get into the car to drive someplace? So um, I, I think I see a people making great progress on about five of our parks right now that we can say we're on time and budget and going to be doing a great job. Uh, but after that, we'll have to come back to this group and say, how do we move forward? I have one question for Sarah on Union. Could you just briefly cover the sequencing of the county road realignment the reservoir expansion and the trail for those all our acts. <laughs> yes. Because I feel like we've seen for a year in our notes that we're waiting on what kind of road to change. Sure. I see that's in the CIP, but will they partially funded? So is it fair to prioritize a trail that we can't actually play action on because other things haven't happened yet? Right. So we had a meeting a couple weeks ago where a decision was made that Union Reservoir Company is going to work as like a separate project um, to basically do a sort of an interim widening of CR26 um, that would allow us to build the trail on the older portion then of County Road 26. Um, because yeah, they it's like the transportation TRP 128, I think it is, they don't have the funding for, I think they said like three to five years to actually right. do that realignment. So our plan currently is to do the design um, and then phase construction. And we don't know what design will look like. There are a lot of environmental constraints here that we want to be cognizant of. And also, we're trying to balance Union Reservoir Company's needs because this will serve as a maintenance road for them. And then the um, rangers, too. So there's a lot of unknowns for what the trail will actually look like. We were calling it a loop trail, but we're not going to call it that because we're not really sure what that will look like. So that's the idea now. What? What are you what are you looking at as, as far yeah. as not a loop what well what she, calling it the interim trail. Yeah, like not going this is really prime habitat up here, so currently. Can we get to the dirt roads to connect? Yeah, so having like there's been discussion, I, I don't know exactly where, but using some of these already these roads that are already on uh, city land and like having that be a connection and make maybe like an emergency access route to the trail. But then having you turn around because another thing is they want to keep it um, fee free. They want to keep it free. So, and they all, the rangers also only want one point of access into Union Reservoir. So, there's a lot of things to consider with that. Mm -hmm. Thanks. The roads on the north side are beautiful, quiet, flat dirt roads. That if you could reuse those, that would be awesome. Up here. Yeah, it's like oh, it's already like a free trail that's there that is one car an hour. <laughs> I see trucks there. I don't know what's yeah. happening over here, but it's a big dairy. But yeah, yeah. Once you get to silage, like my dog ran cross country in that road when it when they're doing beet harvest, when they're doing silage harvest, it, it gets pretty dangerous out there. So yeah, I think those things we definitely we again trying to strike that balance of how do you get what the community really asked for, which is a loop trail. Um, Looking at going all the way over to County Road 5, looking at you know, 28 on the north, how do you tie these things in together to try to still give the recreational experience, but still trying to protect those natural resources that we have in this area? So it's going to be um, Cause there's, a lot of conversation. There's also the Bell County Road 26 trail study plan as well, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's currently happening. Just going to design this trail right now, too, for you. <laughs> <laughs>
He's got it twelve. Great twelve there for you. You mean it's twelve? You could do. I mean, we have seasonal trail closures for all sorts of other things. Right. We just have an ag seasonal trail closure for ag. Probably a good idea. I mean, maybe it's Why never gotten done all the rest of the around the rest of the world, but log on. Not pave the way and um, crush your find the way. <laughs> so, if we take a step back, eight and five started twenty twenty three, right? Yes. Right. So. Uh, we had until 2028. Eight, correct. If I'm looking at the packet, there's three right now that are like in the in the process in the works. So three of those are in Stephanie's, and then you have you have Sarah's, which is the other U is the Union Interim Trail, which is the fourth. Okay. And then she she's talked about twelve that is really out there as well too. So those are those are the ones in the eight five that are pretty much locked in right now. Okay. Which leaves us with three that are not correct. Actively being worked on right now. Yes. And then, and then the the question that we talked about is like, uh, greater focus versus more. Yeah, projects I mean, at the same time, some of these projects. One thing right, you like, know, we project that. managers, you know, um, we can do it all. Fast right now, it may not be the standards we want. We have to, you know, scale back on how we typically do things in Longmont. We okay. could take longer, and let some funds build up, and you know, really try to do them well. But that'd be pushing these out probably past that eighth year, um, or we could scale back in how many we do, and say instead of doing I eight, see. we do six or seven. So we definitely have opportunities. I mean, if you want to give us the time to build up funds, we probably could do. Them all, but probably take more than that eight year. I'm sorry, five years. Yes, eight five years. Eight, yeah. Five years. Eight, yeah, 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 yeah. So that's what we have to kind of look at. We want to you know, look at doing one really well. We want to do look at doing two kind of well. We want to just do three, you know, bare bones. I just kind of want to know what Nina Gallo would be like about pickleball courts. Would it come in on budget then? The neighborhood doesn't care about picking ball courts. They just want a place to play that's safe to play. Yeah. And they want to play groundies on a good playground. That's what they want. And, you know, again, I think one of the things is as we look at our all of our park system, you know, we really try to engage the neighborhoods to see what they want. But again, even a neighborhood park, you try to mind if that's a Fox Mills neighborhood or, or others that really is still, these are open to the community at large. We've heard from you know, our, our community that pickleball is a big piece. So how do you balance that with what the neighbors want plus what the community at large wants? Well, I was just saying this, right. as far as budget. Yeah, we, they we could be put in later, those. maybe, yeah. you know, like when, yeah. yeah. Okay. Where do we go from here? In this conversation, you began. Uh, where would this group like to go, or what would you like us? I, again, I think with Jeff and me, is how do we engage you as we kind of move forward to make sure that we're hearing your voices before it's to the point where decisions have been made? Yeah. And that's what I think I hear from this group all the time is, you know, when your budget budgets decided, how do we get to have a say in this? And, and it's really a difficult year to have a say because of the eight and five. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's pretty much set for us right now, but you know, what's that future look like? What six? What's and it's a six one. Right. So, so, so maybe that's so, the direction we go in, right? So we have Sandstone Ranch Phase Four. We have the Quail Campus, and that is one that we've talked about um, as you know going with. Pickleball courts over there to kind of mirror the, the courts of the tennis courts over there. To, um, just before you move on to Aaron's point, if we're going to build pickleball at Quail, do can we save money by not doing that? You know, so that's I mean, that's yeah, it. I mean, it's that it, pickleball people with pickleball play pickleball have access to cars, people that live 
in Countryside Village need a place for their kids to play that hopefully there's not a third shooting at for this year. You know, like they're like this is like that neighborhood has been so underserved for so long. Here's what I'm saying is that like at, since I've been here, you've been telling me that there's no room for community voice because the community the community was that we were already but it just keeps put, getting pushed back, getting pushed back. I can't really represent that community, but I know they don't play pickleball. If we can save the money and have pickleball at Quail, which is a nice little walk for anybody from there, like then could you know Gallo happen? Like could it happen? Could there just be open places <clears throat> for kids to play and a good, a good non-rickety because the playgrounds in that area are pretty rickety and pretty schwag. Like, so, it's already designed. We're trying to find ways to bring it within budget. Yeah, but I, what I'm saying is you've probably already got a good playground there, so let's keep the playground, right. take the pickleball, and like you could add the pickleball later maybe, you know? I, I agree with that. I think like Dry Creek, I think you guys did this, where it was built out as a community park, but not all the things were installed. Right. It's planned, right? right? I think if you're looking at ways to speed up progress with limited funds, Doing the infrastructure of the park, but not all the things in the park is one person doing that. You can leave this, the grassy space that, if in 10 years, demand for wall develops, you can certainly install it there. But until then, it's just irrigating grass is 100% cheaper than building the courts. Or just prairie. Or just prairie. Mm -hmm. have, have, we had, have we had uh, uh, open hearings about uh, uh, design? And in those designs, we've Include a pickleball. That's a that's a, a can of worms that's already kind of been opened up a little bit, as you all know. Right. Um, and with the pickleball folks being so aggressively vocal about that and wanting more and more, I mean, I hear more from them than I hear from other folks about yeah. that type of thing. And I would I would I would agree with your point there. It's one of those uh, situations that yes, we could and probably should wait on it to make this thing happen to make it get to the level that we want. But uh, I can see see a, a lot of uh, uh, grinding of teeth and consternation going on too that would make people uh, uh, would it, it would just be a, uh, a another thing that people say. Well, you know why. Why is my tax dollars not being used? You know the way that we first initially planned it, and that that is a a really fine line to walk in regards to what we're trying to achieve here. Um, I, I'm not against you know saying it's going to come in phases. I'm just saying that when the first phase, when the earlier, uh, you know, even if that's Phase two or phase three, it's going to have to come into a, a relatively quick. Yeah, because privileged yes, people, because right. privileged people are vocal, yeah. and uh, people that aren't privileged um, aren't vocal, don't have access. So I'm on this board to represent the less privileged people. Let's get that park going. Is what I said. Get that park going. Let's play around in it. Yep, and I think. But those are good. We've talked about phasing lots of stuff, and that's one of the things that, again, we've talked about that one to Harold specifically, saying this is one of the parts that we're not going to uh, hold off on doing is we have to bring things back. So that, again, that was not one of the eight and five, but it's one that's running parallel to that, and um, it came in so over budget, we had to go back and rebid it, so that started down a little bit, but we're still moving forward, and still, hopefully, um, that just throws us off by about 90 days. Um, if you, so, uh, Nina Gallo was not 8 and 5? No. no. Oh. No. Okay. So, the reason we didn't do that, the 8 and 5, because we, remember we did 8 and 5, that was one of, one of the things that Harold brought as an idea was doing um, the BBA, the um, value added process, which is a bidding process. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Nina yeah. Gallo was down the road far enough that we had a design on it already. They thought it would be hard to take that and put it into a package with basically kind of blank slate projects. So yeah. um, that's, again, for our community, it's great because we have eight and five, plus we have that part still going too, so. Okay. 
So I, I think you're going back to, to Ben's question then though was um, the pickleball is at, at Quail, um, the sandstone phase four, and then the the completion of the Dry Creek um, Community Park phase two, the full build up of that. I, I don't know that much about how um, much demand there is at sandstone. I assume there's a lot of demand and they would use up that space if it was phase four was done. It's it's designed as a ball field area. So uh, but there's demand for ball field access. And yes. like it's already booked up. Yes. Okay. And then dry creek phase two is moving the sled hill back. Is that, is that right? No, that that goes back in that process. Yes, that's part of that. But okay. um, there's more to it. Than there's that. more to it yeah. than that. Ball fields yeah. and golf yeah. okay. uh, Water feature. There is the permanent uh, snow hill there also. Right. Right. Okay, so really it's just, so a couple of different ways we can talk about this. So we, it sounds like there's at least five that are in the hopper in motion. Right. So it's really just the three that we're looking for some feedback on about kind of what we're thinking about them. And we can go a different direction than this. We can either say, we can talk about like stack ranking those three. I think it's somewhat helpful, but also I think it was what we were kind of implying was more so like, do we want to take our time with those at risk of missing our five-year deadline? Right. Versus, uh, you know, trying to fix the deadline and and more so looking to cut the phase things, phase things out. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Those are the two open questions. I think we're kind of it. I, I think you know, that's where again. I think even in terms of recreation, I think you know, for us, you know, those are the questions exactly you ask. Um, would we rather like proceed with, you know, Dry Creek, or is it better to get Sandstone Phase Four, where we know we have a demand? And that's again from our side building it. We don't really know the demand. Yeah. Yeah, I I, I just throw a vote towards uh, to Sandstone because with uh, Spring Gulch, this craziest name, Spring Gulch Two Phase or Phase Three, <laughs> whatever, you know, we have a, a, a alignment problem from the end of same frame trail to to where that is of how people navigate on bikes or by foot between basically the playgrounds to the oh to yeah. the, could to you the, show them there yeah, yeah. 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 would phase four help that at all yeah that's, that's what what I'm I'm just how why would it yeah, like remember. if you're putting ball I mean, ball fields you want to do it yeah, yeah. Well, well, I, well, what what I understood is from Steve uh, Red center. Yeah. yeah. Um, the right to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Sorry. Um, oh, Mark, sorry. There you go. Um, there's a lot of fields that's too right. So okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. So, uh, ball fields, playground. So, yeah, so you're coming back through here. Yeah. Um, and so there was, I remember the conversation with Steve with the, with the, uh, realignment of the ball fields, which I guess goes here, yeah. right, is that there was going to be an alignment of a trail to go around these fields somehow or connect these fields so you're not getting into the playground traffic because you have bike and pedestrian traffic that will be picked up there to then connect to Sandstone over here. Oh. So the trail ends, the trail ends down here, right, and then there's Questions of, you know, where phase thirteen well, goes right, I mean, and then how do we connect going. over to here? And so, um, the understanding we have is that part of this expansion would be figuring out this alignment, so you're not missing people over the fields. I'm not sure. If that's I'm right. not. I'm not sure either. I have. I can take a look at that. We get back to you and. Um, because no, no one can ride any of those. Right, that makes sense. There. And again, to way too many people. So you're my concern was that you were thinking that somehow we just continue just going south down through everything to the south of those ball fields. Easy. You're just looking for a tie-in. So yeah, some way to tie in without going out to the street. Right. Um, that yeah. would be. That seems. That would be like the the lowest stress way for someone who. Right. I thought for some reason you're like a, we think we're still bop down the like, There's just so much. Oh yeah, there's so much other exactly. So that's why I like, when you said that, I got a little concerned. But up in here, I'm just I can pretty easily tell you this is stuff we definitely consider. I don't see a reason we went out to you. I think it's early. I mean, as 
I, I know, I know how much once you guys get done going to Union, there's going to be so many people coming down through there. Right. And, right. I will. Yeah. and you got yeah. little yeah. kids running around yeah. at that yeah. playground. Yeah. 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 So I think that makes sense. So that would be, so, I feel like I'd be on that, on the east side of the, I mean, I don't know, because I never ride on that west side. And I always ride on the east side. No, no, I, I always ride the, like the parking lot in the street. Yeah. But like, yeah. intuitively, people get stuck and they're like, I don't even, it doesn't even occur to them to go away from where they know the trail should be. And they're like, how do I even get there? What's going on? And then the next thing you know, there's a soccer game going on. They're riding their bikes to people. Yeah. So going back to the next, would be going back to next yeah. question. So yeah. I'm going back to it. Hey, why? I think this is a good conversation. I appreciate it. But um, this is where this down here is a Boulder County Conservation Easement over too. So when you start saying getting is easier to trail, and I, I thought you were just like a straight line oh, down here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, that's not going to happen. Yeah, and if we all decide why do we have to go to Boulder County yeah. and have them convince them they're going to say no too. So yeah. that's again why conservation easements matter and can become challenging sometimes. Right. Yeah. However, we have a conservation easement up by um, Hayes. We have a conservation easement over Hayes that had been planning on the trail coming through. Yeah, so that right. conservation What's easement... This one. I was going to say, because oh. um, Greenway Phase 13 also realigns the trail along the road, right? It's yeah. coming along. It's coming along you, yeah. No, you're right. It goes along the road and then you cross Because that would change how people would come up. Right now, people would go off the road and then go off that way. Mm -hmm. That trail. Well, that's a distinction. Dis yeah. yeah. I mean, the intuitive part is that it's that small parking lot. I get your lighter as man. Yeah. <laughs> and then go head up to the you know, uh, yeah. uh, Spring Mulch area. Yeah. Because in that way, they they, 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 they're they both using the, the street <laughs> to some extent. They really go in the opposite direction. Did you just design a cool new trail? Yeah. <laughs> I did. Did it have like no ski lift technology? It. What's that? Did it have like ski lift technology? No. It, it, it was it, going it, away it, from the birds. Um, <laughs> Yeah. The whole like no, 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 the whole vision <laughs> zero right that you know right. graphing is playing. That I mean, synod, like talking about synergistic spending yeah, exactly. and all that. Yeah. I mean, that aligns really well like, with yeah. getting bikes out of out of meaningful traffic areas. I mean, it it, it, it doesn't sound like the hardest sell in the world. To... So Scott, you you when you started talking, you said that you were of the three. Um, sandstone, dry creek, phase two, cover mm -hmm. pickleball. You're most interested in sandstone, but that's somewhat contingent on what actually is part of that project. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, so then there's so just an action of right. just downloading that. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Somewhat contingent on that. Okay. Can, can you circle the area where the ball fields would go? How, yeah. how much of that space uh, does it take? I don't know. I just yeah. is it art? Is like, it art design? Or is it like cover design too? There's, there's, there's a concept, a concept, and then a trying to design. There, there's there's a very really to you take you this right here and then think yeah. about. I would see it's almost fits perfectly. Right yeah. 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 This is playing like adventure ball. What is that? Where you leave the prairie, and people have an adventure while they're playing their ball, and you really have to look for it. And you have to what did she, she call it? Yeah. Adventure yeah. ball. So. Uh, for, part, part of the, the thing of that design where the concession stand was in the restroom, right? it was intentionally put there because of the two complexes. That way, if, if we were running concessions, you didn't have to build two of them. Yep. Well, that place just, I just was so impressed uh, after that brewing and Irish football. Uh, that was... Just it just was so perfect for the yeah. Are there any other so of the again going back to the three between Sandstone Ranch Phase Four, Drag Creek Phase Two, or Coral Road Pickleball so three? Any other thoughts on the board on which of those are most interesting? And Aaron, I, you can also speak up as if you think something different. I yeah, I don't even know. Like it's just a lot. I think my, my take would be that um, taking care of what we have to me is more important than new things. Yeah. And generally, um, like adding pickleball courts to Bill Creek when we just failed to get money to re repair the rec center, let's see that money go to the rec center if we could as an option. Um, but not that it's enough to do anything, but it seems like if budgets are tight, adding pickleball courts at Bill Creek is the most of interest to me. 
uh, even if it's a local community, like we just they just opened a thirty court private facility in Bowen that serves a lot of need for that too. Um, thirty? No, five. Five. Yeah. I don't know. Five. Five. yeah, and and they they pay seventy five dollars an hour. Yeah. So, but you understand yeah. pickleball pickleball players that we're talking about paying nothing. That that's their audience. They're not Dale's audience. That is a small part of the entire pickleball community. The people who are always at everything talking about pickleball, they want it like tennis. They want it everywhere, all the time. Oh yeah. And that is a that's a that's a it's it's really costly for the city to build those things for a very small number of people. And we're smart to take some of our tennis courts and move them into like through a round of uh, Hover Park there uh, and turn them into pickleball courts because they're used nonstop. I mean, even with this wind event, you'd be like, how's that supposed to work? I mean, yeah, they're yeah. out there. Yeah, and Clark the same way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're getting to get the sense yeah. that we're not going to come to a consensus of like, if we're trying to score stack rank these three, we're probably not going to get give to a line. Well, the other thing we okay. do is really, this as this first update, is we start looking at budgets and looking at where we want to go. And I, I do think of, you know, hearing from recreation what those kind of pushes are. <clears throat> Trying to get to the point where we start looking at budget, looking at needs from that side of the table and the side of the table, and having a little bit more robust conversation. Tonight, I think it really just was giving you guys you all the, the heads up that yeah. um, I think we're going to be pushing through this first group pretty well. Um, it's going to be super tight. Um, we're being as creative as we can, but it's going to be that next group that we want to talk about what we really think we need. And I think some of the ideas you have here, I think heralds and council will be open to that. Is um, are there ways we could use that to upkeep things? Are there parts that maybe we don't need to be pushed in another area to try to, to increase value to the community in those areas? So I think these are all meaningful conversations. In, in other words, change it to five and five. Could, I, I mean, but that, that's, uh, again, it could be five and five, where you go, because we, we definitely want, we want Sandstone phase four, you know, pool those dollars and make a really significant push it sandstone to make that it and then we'll wait on the other two or I, again those are good ideas but and you didn't mention this but one of the things we as staff have talked about is the need for a special event area i mean fourth of july has really brought that to uh the forefront of, of, of yeah. there really isn't a place in our community to, to do those kind of large events and maybe the sister's property at some point, or even Montgomery, one of the two, could uh, possibly become that location that's, instead that's of, right, yeah, yeah, instead sorry, of doing lots of athletics. Well, right. What about uh, the yeah, big right. parking the, lot there. at the Sugar Beet factory? It's already paved. Well, that's <laughs> going to be, it's such a complex uh, facility that it might, uh, It's and it's not ours to, yeah, so this is Neil's right here, and this will be the community park up here. And like Jeff said, you know, we're we're already partnering with the Innovation Center, which is this right here, doing drone shows. So maybe this is something that's close that could be thought about as a community gathering area to do some of those things. But again, um, we also have Montgomery. Up here, so we have kind of two that again aren't on the, the five-year plan at all. That maybe we say that's what's really more important. What? Yeah. Sure. This might be like the weirdest thing ever, and it's like not what people do. What if we partnered with the county to make the venue that we have, Boulder County Fairgrounds, that's in here, make it a joint? thing that really serves needs. The county's trying to improve the fairgrounds right now. And if we went to the table with county and we started actually doing things together around the fairground, I just feel like I, I just see a lot of like half done stuff with the county there, but that's like that they need support on and things that we need support on. We need an event place. Well that is an event place. It's a pretty good event place. It needs to be better. And things like, well, you know, we have, we run all these special things with all these concerts, and then the fair languishes. The fair is ours, you know. It's it's city of Longmont fair with Boulder County Fair at the same time. Nobody 
nobody knows the difference except for the people that sit at these tables, right? So if we start partnering in like that more creative way, like what if we're bringing money to the table, that's already developed land. What if we're bringing money and ideas and time to that table instead of just redoing starting from square one and like doing it jointly? It just makes more sense to me. It's right there. It's right in the center. Yeah, I generally think with the, the peripheral parks as an event space has the same problem that we just discussed with sandstone. You said, why don't we do fireworks at sandstone? Well, it's hard to get there. There's no transit. Buses would get stuck. Traffic's hard. Yeah. Any of the peripheral parks wouldn't help that. Well, sisters, that, that's one thing. We've had some discussion yeah. because of the Fourth of July fund. Yeah. And mm -hmm. sisters, we do have the, the quail campus area. So that that's a big advantage to that, just that particular spot. Yeah. Because we do have large parking lots there, another phase going in at some point. So that that's just the thought there. Not that doesn't discount these other ideas. It just it, it, it's, it, it's just another thing to consider. It I'm not sure it'd even be the staff's number one thing. Right. Okay. I like that yeah. So if you're into Post Rogers Grove, they're very connected, the trails are already there. Yeah. It's a bunch of dry parking lot space that's empty for the end of the year. And I said, hey, we're useful in the city. I mean, I, there are actually there, there are events there. Uh, there are three events there it every single week. Sure, sure. But it could do, it could be more it could be more utilized and you know, utilized with and we I don't want to take it away from the ad community at all, ever. But if we the ad community is looking for support from the urban community as well. It would be a good crossover, and I don't know. It would just take a lot of negotiation from clever and open-hearted people to, to work together. Let me just, uh, just take this one step back, and I thank you, thank you, Aaron, for showing that. Um, let's just set aside where the event space would be, whether it's, yeah, sure. the, whether it's Montgomery or Sisters or the uh, collaboration with Boulder County for the fairgrounds. Do we, like, just a gut check, do we think that having an establishing event space where it's top of mind because of the July 4th show, but do we find that more uh, urgent and more of a, a need as compared to the other three 85 projects that are not in the queue? For me, it's hard to tell with that because I don't play baseball. I will play pickleball. I know pickleball players. I know baseball players. Um, and that's what I'm seeing those others are towards those things. But I guess an event space serves a larger cross-section of our community than pickleball or baseball or anything, or even, sorry, even like... But less frequent use, events. right? I think the... I agree with you. I don't disagree with you. <coughs> I don't know. I, I would just say <laughs> when it comes to baseball, we haven't added a baseball field in Longmont since 1998. Oh, that's a long time. And, and our community has grown a lot in that time. Yeah. So I, I do think there are, uh, is a need for more athletic. Well, and you're, you're, if you are enlarging that, that makes it for a tournament play. For yeah. tournament. And that's big dollars yeah. coming in from that community. As a high school teacher, I can tell you how many how many club kids there are okay. that are doing that stuff. Yeah, I'm it's a lot. I mean, it's kind of big money. What's up? Um, sort of answer your question, Jeff, do you know like what the demand is on the UOPP side for other spaces for events coming from outside or coming from the community that we're not able to serve? Okay. Well, I think if you if you build it, they'll come, sort of thing, because they people know what we've got, and so they you know when they call us, they're they're saying you know what other you guys have, and they're looking at parks. So the the events we see, you know, they'll look at Roosevelt, and that's that's like the main the main one. So I, I wouldn't say there's a clamoring that that we've seen on that group. Um, but our spaces are in demand, and this community supports a lot of events, not just ours, but, but a lot of private events too. So it, it's, I don't know the answer to that. So, yeah, I, it might, yeah, I think the answer is no, I don't see a clamor for that. At, yeah. After a situation that occurred, they thought they were going to have that, that uh, 
uh, game of football uh, in somewhere in Denver, and that fell through. They asked for double. I talked to the guy that arranged it and set it all up, and his uh, his father-in-law is just my neighbor, and uh, they came to Longmont. They're so happy with that that if they can get an opportunity to do that again, all right. and they go through a cycle of big cities like Chicago, Boston, and New York, and, and so on. Uh, oh, they love us. They were so happy with they love us. And Chris, Chris that great job of they did a, they're doing some filming of it and it's getting out there and what's gonna happen is I think because of something like that that's going to be one of our Tensone Ranch is gonna get really, you know, busy. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, I don't I don't wanna build recreational services for people that don't live in Longmont. Or in the surround, I mean, I'm fine with building recreational services for people that live in, you know, the the Lafayette, Longmont, Louisville kind of coalition, you know. But I don't want to build recreational areas for people in Kansas. That's not our job. You know, they're coming out for a baseball. Like, that's great. And I, I like I like traveling with my kid to things, too. But, like... I don't think that's our priority is building things for people that are coming from Kansas and Chicago to come here. And I know they bring money, but I'm not like, frankly, I'm never interested in that part of it. And I know you like, we have to be, but I'm not like, that's not what we're, we're not here to make money. We're here to make, we're here to, to serve the recreation and open space uh, for our area. I, I would agree with that, but I do think there is a push, not only from within staff, but is it Longmont has a, a big push of trying to get large events to come to Longmont, and the, the more facilities that we could have available, the, the bigger events that we could end up uh, drawing uh, to our community and, and then reaping the benefit of the, the sales tax. Uh, I mean, I'll say, as far as ball fields go, we don't build them for tournaments. We build them for the kids in yeah. this area. Which is good. And that's then, what, that's and what then, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. The tournaments are a fringe benefit. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Thomas? Yeah. Um, are there any sort of projections or like soft numbers that you guys get that might tell us where money numbers go if you do build it? Like what? Uh, like the sales revenue? Tax? No, yeah. For like how much? No, not not what we're not how we're going to build it, but if if it was built, if that's going to help get you guys above that seventy eight percent or whatever it was. Or, sorry, sixty eight percent. Like, is it or oh, that's just tertiary? It's just yeah. completely different. Okay. Uh, there, there's a number. For example, if we build three ball fields sandstone, we could come up with an estimate of how many. Go. How many more potential tournaments? How much more rental? You know, we we could do that, and it's you know it's in the tens of thousands of dollars. But okay. it, yeah, that's not that's not pushing. I don't want to yeah. say it's a drop in the bucket. But it's not. It's that's real revenue. But it, budgeting wise, it's be great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Drop, never mind. And and a lot of time hasn't been put into that because the fields are so far down the road right now. This was a great uh, conversation. I mean, we meandered a little bit. And that's okay because we're all learning here and, and, and uh, uh, growing it. And, but I don't think there's any immediate action necessarily no, today. I think it's a highlight. I think, you know, I, Jeff can say what he thought too, but I think Harold was pleased that we were doing what we been directed to do. We're spending money and we don't have, we're not really asking for anything more. We have, you know, the ones in the eight and five already, but um, his big push is, you know, don't ask for more money if you um, haven't completed what you've already done and you don't think you have the capacity to do it. Right. So right now we have projects that are ongoing, staff is fully engaged in those and the ones that are on the horizon, um, I think we do have the capacity to, to do those with the staff we have. And if, I, if I'm doing my math right, so the the ones that are in progress now, they're design, they're like construction for the most part in 2025? 24, 25, late 24, 25, 24 25. 25, yes. Which means that we would could start design for the next batch 
in late 2025, 2026. Right, and that's the one that we did talk about tonight, and that's probably Sarah's um, phase 12 uh, of the same brain. Got it. Trail. Our team was a little less capacity. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay. Uh, well, we we did uh, move pretty quickly to the earlier parts of the agenda, so we still we could stay on this topic for a little longer. But yeah, I have four questions. We can yeah. start off talking about CIP and then went in talking about eight and five quickly. So, so the eight the eight and five are our our most significant CIP projects. Right. So as we talk about CIP, those are the, the big ones. We also have the one we track of, and these are kind of. And then we did hire a position for that, and it is the maintaining what we have. And um, Elisa really is the project manager side and Stephanie's team that really is doing the Kensingtons and the Roosevelt's and the Thompson's to make sure that we're staying up on our renewals and maintenance of our projects as well. But yeah, very good. So I have a couple of CIP related questions. I guess um, as, as an example, I've tried to read through the CIP document, understand what it means, and I've had a very hard time with that. But um, I just grabbed one at random. Sisters Community Park is in the CIP, listed as a funded project. It lists $328,000. This is the last year's CIP PDF. $328,000 for 2025 to build a bike skills park at Sisters Community Park. What does that actually mean? So, that, that should We've be, never talked about that. It is yeah. And that's next year. So, that way, I believe, should be. Up. That should be unfunded now. That was something that Steve, because okay. we're doing That's fine. That's earthwork, fine. Yeah. we were doing earthwork, and we knew we had a need to in the community for that bike skills area. This really was some of the the kids were building stuff along uh, right. the creek. So we're like, what can we do to fill that need? Could we just dump some dirt, take stuff that is really spill material to make something? And whenever you do that stuff, it, it's going to take permitting, and it's going to take design, it's going to take staff, and it's going to take work. So. Um, we really kind of cut, cut out, goes back to Harold's piece. Do you have staff to do it or do you have dollars to do it? So, so that example that should be. You guys will be updating both the text description, yes. the funding timeline, yep. and changing the status as part of this year's CIP process? Yes. So you kind of look through all the all the PRO projects and say, where, where are we at with these? What's kind of shifted around? Right. What's there? And that's I'm kind not of sure what, what you're looking at. But I, because when I first got here, I really wasn't sure how those were linked to who's doing what, but there should be a little initials. They're Parks and Rec projects, it says. Like, okay. Yeah. Now, now, like, now I know who my word for that. That's PRO 206 with Sisters. Yeah, that's just an example. Steve. I don't care about that. Yeah, it's, it's more just understanding, like, you've asked us for input on, on CIP. I've had a hard time knowing what you are looking for from us because I don't understand how the funding in the CIP document works. Where it lists a bunch of years, there's a bunch of dollars, there's funded, unfunded, it's quite dense. And it comes from different funding sources. Yeah. Um, and that's the part, again, going back to when you say, what are we looking for from you? As we're working through this and getting it to the place to get it to council, a lot of those decisions that I'm looking at for 25, 25 are been made, and as we talked about, like, phase 12 in, in the 90s. So there's these projects yeah. that are continually going forward, and that's the hard part to say. What we're what we're looking for group mine would really be um, prioritizing what we know is coming up, and then helping us look that that further piece out. Because uh, again, if we get something done in twenty five, we will be having that need, and then so we get back going back to that CFP thing, saying what was funded, what are our gaps, how can we pull things forward then. So maybe give us comment tonight. We can do it in fifty. <laughs> well, I was thinking is like maybe a better way for us to give maybe a better way for us to give feedback would be to say, here's all of the CIP projects, whether they're funded, partially funded, or unfunded. As proud, knowing these as they're described in, the, in there, what? How would you rank those in terms of interests? Because you guys are then going to reset, reassess what's of most interest to you guys. Because you're saying, like for example, sisters, we're going to take that funding. And move it somewhere else probably is not important. If we could look at all of these together and give that feedback, if that's useful, we could do that. Okay. But um, otherwise, I, otherwise, I don't know how to help on the CIP process because it's so complicated for you guys already. I, 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 I think that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it one it thing feels important, but it feels like we don't know how to help. I yes. Yeah. And, and I think that's a yeah. great way of putting it because for years now, this has been the challenge because. It's such complex process with so many different pots of money. It, it it's hard to really get a feel of what 
what you all want, other than us continuing to have the, what are the next three, uh, the, the five projects right. that would be your priority, which maybe helps uh, council make their decisions down the road too. I would agree. I, I kind of want to hear, as council member, I want to hear from you guys what you think. Uh, you know, you got into this because you're really engaged and you want to, to uh, have a say in it, and this is kind of your passion. And as it being your passion, I'd prefer, you know, I, I'm not into building big uh, uh, facilities uh, to bring in folks, as you were saying, there from Kansas. I just know that those big facilities from Kansas, uh, those big facilities sometimes pay for the things that we really value and want. Uh, and in this more localized, uh, you know, pocket parks and things like that, that people actually use every day, uh, especially in community, uh, you know, uh, neighborhoods. And that's, that's what's more important to me. Uh, you know, I grew up uh, just at Old Town, um, and Thompson Park was used for everything from football games to, to, to baseball games. And we never had, a, uh, had anything lined up and, you know, with uh, anything like that. It was just, you know, this stump over here and that tree there. And that's the important part. That, so that's my stance on all of it, is less is more in a lot of ways. Like, let the kids build their bike skills park. Like, it's fun, right? Like, what, like, we don't need to build so much stuff. We can use what we already have. But I do think, like, the pocket park, I'm just going to say that if you look, if you live in a trailer in there, there's no kid with any place to play. There's no place to play. The only playground in that area, there's a small playground in Countryside Village. There's a very small, janky playground, and there's a very small playground at Casa de la Esperanza that if you're a part of that community or friends with somebody in that community, you can play at. And that's it for those kids until you go over to Quail and they don't have access to go to Quail because they don't have parental supervision. So that to me, I, the community park, I don't think there should be a community park there. It's too close to sandstone. It's too close to Quail. I don't think we need a community park. I think we need a neighborhood park there. I'm thinking less is more. Just places that are okay for kids to play. And they can have places where occasionally they get a scraped knee or whatever. We don't have to, like... You know, it can be stumps. It just needs to be a place with a bathroom that's not exploding and people to check on it and make sure that there's not trash in there and it's clean and it's respectful of the community. And I think with a lot of our parks, we don't have to make them, like, we don't have to make a cooler pavilion at the museum I worked at the museum for a long time. You don't have to make a cooler pavilion at the museum necessarily. You know what I mean? We don't always have to keep making things the best and the brightest, but we do need things to be nice and less is more. Like those stumps that you played on, Sean, those are great, but we don't have any stumps at Thompson Park anymore. No, no, I'm just, yeah, I'm just saying. Oh, was there? Okay. Oh, we're going to have your stump. Yeah, awesome. But, you know, like those things. But, like, having those areas for, like, you know, people with small yards and things like that, if we're advocating for denser cities, which is a, a mobile home thing, it's a dense city kind of thing, we're ad advocating for denser cities, then we've got to put the, we've got to put the place to, for people to be and access nature in it. Well, like I said, I prefer to hear from you guys. And then, and you're reaching out to people and members of the community. You know, they're conveying the same thing, but that's the direction we should go. Thank you, Aaron. Any other thoughts on outside of eight and five uh, that you were looking at? I'm sure it's in. <clears throat> Actually, I, I think we asked last year that we have time to talk about CIP before you guys do the system. And I'm now kind of thinking we should actually decouple that and talk about this after you've done CIP. It sounds like you have updates to all these projects that you want to go through and review, mm -hmm. look at the funding, and then maybe in the summertime, after that whole process is done, we could then help you give you that feedback about prioritization and adjustments yeah. to those for the, following for, for the following year outside that process. That makes a lot of sense. 
There's a yeah. Uh, intuitively, it seems like oh, we're it's too late. Um, yeah. But actually, if you just put it on the right around. It's okay. No, we're actually quite early. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it is really so, the last half full. Yeah. 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 Right. Uh, okay. I like that. Scott, any? I'm sorry. Just to please that being late. You're you're right. We we start these conversations and. October, November, December, really, is when we start doing accounting. I was the same way when I first got here. It's like, all right, this budget's going to open up on this day. You can't start this conversation when the budget opens up. It really has to be. And, and then it was like, well, we can't do anything unless the budget's open. It's like, so let's just make spreadsheets, and then we'll have these conversations, and we put it into budget. So it really has been for all of us just keep pushing it back so we really have good conversations. So that's, that's a really good idea. But it, on the calendar, it says that the city of is system is open until mid-March. Does that the what the CIP system opens on mid in mid March? Right, but we it was you close to the of March. But we we can work in spreadsheets. We have a conversation. Yeah. All the stuff we have in the, the budget system has the things that they hung up on. Budget doesn't even open. They say, "Well, we can't do this because budget's not open." Okay, okay. We should be ready to put stuff into the system when budget opens up. Because you can in thirty days start developing numbers. Thirty and days already have. So my yeah. piece is really, is, yeah. you know, we do this in a spreadsheet. Then it's just a cut and paste into the budget system. Yeah. Okay. Several hours of just sitting there and hammering it yeah. out. Yeah. Uh, Thomas, got any last thoughts on this topic? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other closing thoughts on this? No, I appreciate the input. I think having this conversation as we you know move into the the summer months, so we get ready for upcoming years. I think that we'll have that idea where. Our, but just that, and I, I appreciate you saying that's what you'd like to hear. So that's what I want to hear too. I, I'm not in this, I have directs right now to do eight and five, but if really this this group is saying we'd rather see see six and five, yeah. or rather see five and five, and think about doing a, a a venue area, I think that's what council really wants to hear. That I think our first bunch of ours is like we have a lot of undeveloped parts, and we have a lot of money. Let's spend those dollars and get some stuff out there. And I think taking some time and reevaluating now that we've Check some boxes. Boxes. I think is what council and Harold really would like to hear, rather than just plugging through to and these guys. Not too. I love checking boxes. If I can get eight five done and say we did that, be great. But I'd rather do it the way the community wants it. And again, I'm not. No, oh, by far. Exactly. It's a yeah. good time to reassess because how did those projects get into eight and five? Some right. big projects didn't make it into eight and five because they were already going. We're seeing thirteen. Right. It's already going. So looking at that again. Mm -hmm. Great, awesome. Okay, then I guess we'll move on from here. Uh, closing, closing, closing uh, parts. Okay, so moving on to items from the packet. Do we have any items from the packet that we can raise? Stop. Um, yeah, well, yes. Yeah, so I guess I will. So, um, so how big was the differential from bids in versus expected budget at Gallup? Um, I was going to say, you have Stephanie here or Steve here, so I don't know how I'm going to answer these. But that, I know that was that was like a million and a half over what we had expected. Okay, so big ball parts of this is going to be a bit sixty. Yeah. We, we basically we, we found some other ways. It, it takes a village of people looking at different projects, different funding sources. I think we're going to find ways to do this, but it was it was again, Aaron, this is that could it was taken out. Took a while. It was taking out the dog areas. It was taking out. I was taking out so much stuff. It's like we can't do this. This community, we have to provide something that is there. So I think we found ways to phase it and use some some savings in, in other areas. Okay. Yeah, it was. Like I say that again. We have that's another problem with as you had dollars sitting there, parsing done. You know, they they had a master plan that's done. Like Daniel said, they inherited. Well, that CIP basically adds on a little inflator every year. We get some of these years, that inflator doesn't even mean anything anymore. Those those numbers are so astronomical. Some of the years you're off by, you know, um, factors of ten that you really don't want to thought about. So, but yeah, that one I can answer. I think they were, they were over a million. They were under budget over. So if you take out the dog part and the pickleball, it was we still weren't there. Yeah. We were yeah, it was because I. I mean, once again, it's a neighborhood park. Right. Is that certain pickleball's not like 
Frisbee golf doesn't sit, you know, serve the like, right. dog park doesn't serve the area, you yeah. know. I think the problem is we're not talking about like nothing on in these parks is a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar So like, is it? Or am I misunderstanding that? Like, is there is there a single thing we can the, the big outline thing, and go? Oh, yeah, the basic thing for that because our our city's policy is that we use raw water for our parks. Mm -hmm. That raw water. Um, requires us to put in a pond. That pond has an excavation cost. That's where we're going to go with the, the dirt that's okay. going to be used for the bike park. Um, so that was one of the things that can we put it on domestic water until we until we face in that because we don't need that, that full size pond until the community park comes on and the innovation center is expanding and they're paying. So it's going to, that pond is going to be paid for by the innovation center, the school district with their new I think it's a Montessori school that's going to be over there in the community park. So that this little neighborhood park is taking the full cost of that pond. Um, that was one of the things we really looked at. So the, the pond is one of the bigger hits on that. Yeah, that would be a big cost. Yeah, man. I would guess also that there's like a pretty significant baseline cost of just getting a contractor on site exactly. and setting up, and mm -hmm. then that's a big part of it. And so then you look at little pieces here and there, and they don't save you on that baseline. Right. Which is an argument to do it all at once, contrary to what I was saying earlier. It, it is. Saying. There's a mobilization yeah. cost and set up and a redesign. Yeah. It might be an interesting right. thing for us to do in the future meeting is go into a bid or a budget like that for a park so we better understand some of those things. Mm -hmm. as, a, as like a study of sorts. Yeah. The mobilization is a big piece. Yeah. Other items in the packet? Yeah, I had two little quick ones. Um, was Isaac Walden reached to awarded or not? It says both in the packet. I don't think it was awarded. What's that? Were the Isaac Walden reached to the Army Corps project? It says it was awarded, then it says it will be awarded in order to move forward now. Do you I know, know. It was awarded. It was awarded. Yeah. Yeah. The bridge, right? Okay, yeah. Cool, that's great. Okay. Just, uh, just right here. Um, right. Yes, oh, right. In, yeah. like two sentences. Yeah. 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 yeah, I think there's one. I remember the bridge didn't work because yeah. they're yeah. doing yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. No, that was my idea. The other one was for Danielle. I didn't realize there was this idea of an open space tour from last year. I thought it was a great idea. If, if you're able to make it happen, I'd love to come and hear about yes. some of those topics, that, like, topics that are in there. We would love the crowd to come. Yeah. We um, are putting out, you know, trying to figure out what, trying to figure out council's schedules. We're going to yeah. put a doodle pull out soon. Yeah, that was all. Good idea. Aaron, Thomas? Okay, nothing from me either. Okay, uh, then I think we're okay to move on to items from staff. The only, the only thing I've mentioned is council will be talking about the 4th of July event tomorrow, and uh, we as staff hope we get some direction from council on out of the four. Oh, I doubt that will happen. No. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question on that. So when I go to tell them what I think, um, I because I, I, I sent out an email that ended up being like, ah, oh, you can't do that because that means people are meeting. Like, and I had no idea. I don't know the protocol. Like, if I stand up and say something, you know, and I'll just like... Am I allowed to mention that I um, am not representing Parks Board, but I'm on the Parks Board, so I've been thinking about this for a while so that they know that it's not just somebody who just like heard about it 15 minutes ago and stopped in for the free bottled water? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's important that if you mention Crab, that you're not there representing Crab. Okay. Um, unless you all unless you are. take a Unless you all take, take a yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which we... Yeah. We're not able to we pass that motion bro. last meeting. So. Yeah. Sorry, David. We, I, no, I was going to say, you, you, both, uh, yeah, you, you can if this group votes and says you're speaking on behalf of them, but I think letting council know that you spend your time thinking about using a volunteer as a private member, um, but you're not speaking for them, so it's well within what you're allowed to do. Okay, sorry to interrupt. You guys do your thing. Thanks. Thanks. That's all I have. That was it. Okay. No, I think all we want is your design for St. Brain 12. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've got my desk on my neighbor. I've got my crayons in the car. Yeah, crayons. 300,000 of yeah. design. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We just saved all that money for those parts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. I'm good, thank you. Okay. Uh, items from the board that are not packet updates. Oh, no. That means you have to adjourn, but I love being here so much. <laughs> is, is there a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn. Is there a second? A second. Oh, you got you, 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 you All those in favor? Let's see this. Okay, we're adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. I have to call in for the next two months, meetings. Um, I want to figure out the other one. I'll take a look at maybe like figuring out the audio. It was incoming.